Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Blaze TV. It's Ed Kimberley and Stu Coles, as always. Um, and our guest is a guy who needs no introduction. It's uh, it's David Brawl. Broller, how you doing, man? Good, good to see you. Yeah, I'm doing great, guys. Uh, be nice to see you guys in person right now, but uh, hello from across the pond. Yeah, hey to you too. It sounds like uh, with the news uh, just coming out about the Fife game, um that uh that things might uh, be a little bit more tricky to see everybody in person again real soon but um no the, the reason um, the reason we're doing this the reason we've got you on is that um you, you wanted to uh uh to provide a little bit of an update to the fans about what's been going on with you recently so uh uh the floor is yours sir yeah thanks guys so i know there's been a lot of uh, people asking other uh, fans or other people around town and obviously try to keep as much as internal as possible with uh the process and everything with just the teammates kind of knowing coaches and management. So um, I guess this goes back to a couple of years ago where I started looking for kind of life after hockey options for myself. And as I was still playing. And so this was a decision for me to pursue a job to be a firefighter in the, in the town of Oakville. So, which is close to Toronto. And uh, this is something I've been kind of working at the last couple of years with resumes and courses and, and volunteer experience that led to me getting an opportunity for an interview with the town that's um, uh, the town that's just actually beside the, the city I'm living in right now. So I uh, didn't know where it was going to take me. I did the first interview. And then after the first interview, I kind of that's when I kind of told uh, Stewie. And a couple of guys I was living with, obviously, just like, okay, I'm getting pushed on in the second interview. Don't know what it means, but this is just didn't want to blindside anybody. So uh, I guess the long story short is I made it through past the second interview, which had, to, which then I had to come home and do an uh, evaluation in person. Uh, there was 24 people invited to the evaluation. It was a hands-on assessment along with, along with a psychological test. And um, from there, I was on standby for about a week, week and a half. And then I got a call, I think it was last week now, or maybe a week before that, uh, that I got a, an offer from the Oakville Fire Department. So I think there was around 900 applicants or 1,000 applicants that applied. And they ended up hiring between 15 and 20 people. So um, very hard, very hard job to get into. And it's a little bit different in England because I don't know how it works with the fire department, but there's so many people that want to try to be fire, firefighters and very hard to get into with all these courses and consistency of updating everything. So I got a chance to pursue it. And then that leaves me here with uh, probably, well, not probably, but not going to be coming back to Coventry um, because I'm starting uh, January 4th on my birthday, actually, uh, as the first day of recruit class. Yeah, and it's uh, and life after hockey is clearly something that you've been you've been thinking about, like you said, for for quite some time. And this was, I guess, an opportunity that you just couldn't pass up. Like you said, it's it's uh, only a select few get to go through and do this. Yeah, as I said, when I read you the numbers, there it's very very slim chance. As you said, almost about, around a thousand applicants. Um, yeah, it's something I've been I've thought about since I was like 23, 24, when I first started doing the fire firefighting stuff courses and all that and you know what I just didn't know when it was going to happen so I just kind of kept putting my name in the hat and see what happened and unfortunately it was in the middle of a season where I'm also doing some schooling and playing hockey so there's a lot going on the last month with balancing school and trying to decide about hockey and then what the up in the air if I should fly home or not for the fire department so there's a lot of uh, hurdles I had to hop over and then now I've kind of from the realization of actually the offer was out there and I, I kind of know what path I'm choosing now, right? Yeah, and sure. you, um, this is, you, you said this is something that's been, you've been sort of working towards for a while. This isn't something that's been in your head. It's been something that you've been actively to, you'll have to excuse me for a little bit of social media stalking, but I think you, you've um, posted some videos over the summer of like being involved or, observing like some testing and some some training that was going on in the local fire department yeah when i was in uh, greenville south carolina so the east coast hockey league last year i uh, attached on to a volunteer fire department there and i was doing about two shifts a week there and as another thing for resume and for experience right i got a chance to uh 
to go there and kind of you see all this training everything everybody knows they want to do this job then you get actually get to live it for a bit and you realize how special it was and that's when it really kind of stuck with me like oh this is something I want to do um, but yeah as I said the last couple of years every summer I come home I'm doing two three months of some sort of training or certifications just to enhance the resume and my experience so it, as I said it leads back to all the way about four or five years ago where I started uh, from scratch pretty much leaving the game behind and, and particularly even the the blaze fans behind i mean that must have been pretty tough even though it's, it's clearly something you've been you've been wanting to do for quite some time because it, it was a mutual relationship wasn't it you you love them and they love you yeah and i i can't say enough good things about coventry uh the fans were awesome i enjoyed meeting everyone and had such a memorable memorable first year first season and obviously coming back this year was, was super special we didn't know what was going to happen with covid so um, I thank everyone that was involved, whether it's um, the players that were there, uh, management, fans, everyone that was involved. And obviously a big part of this was to do schooling as well. And uh, Stewie gave me an opportunity to uh, to do some schooling when I was there. So um, those things don't happen in other leagues. You can't just pick up and try to get your master's in any other league. So it's been very important and uh, feel honored to be able to be one of those guys to to, to start the school program. Um, but yeah, this is something that, like I said, I've been doing for a while now and I have nothing but great memories in Coventry. I still talk to the guys here and there, uh, but it's just something I have to kind of turn the page and go on to the next chapter and, and go into another, uh, another profession. Fair enough. Stu? Yeah. And, and this, this isn't unique to you, right? Because, you know, players in minor league hockey, across the across the world will be thinking the same thing because you know hockey doesn't last forever you've got to have a career or some thoughts lined up afterwards you everyone's got to be planning for this sort of ending haven't they yeah and that's and that's the thing is I, for me like a lot of some guys have their four years of their college degree uh some guys have good part-time jobs in the summer where they can just transition to a full-time job so for me being professional at the age of 20 i didn't go to school until this year in coventry so there's a lot of uncertainties and not sure exactly what direction I was going to go. And then I kind of just went, went with this and see where it took me. Obviously in an ideal situation, I'd play hockey a couple more years and then I'd slide right into a fire department, but it doesn't work that way. Um, I'm going to miss hockey a lot, but I'm also super excited for this next chapter. And it's uh, it's, it's pretty similar to hockey with your the camaraderie and, having to follow the chain of command and uh, having uh, co-workers, four, five, six co-workers on a shift. So very team-like, um, high intensity training and stuff. So I'm looking forward to a uh, transition into, uh, you know, a field that's your first responder and you get to help people that are, are having crappier days and make a, make a difference in the, in the community, right? So that's an interesting similarity because I think a lot of people, uh, you know, the, you kind of live for the weekend and uh, the, the thrill of the crowd. Um, but even though your career in, in terms of playing is coming to an end, um, I mean, you can't not look back on it fondly, right? You had, a, you had a great time in the Ontario League. You had some success there. Heck, you played a cup of coffee in the NHL. Not not a lot of guys get to say they did that. So um, yeah. have you been kind of nostalgic about it recently or is that not quite set in yet? To be honest with you, I, I still feel like I'm going to go play hockey next week. I, it just hasn't <laughs> sunk in. It's just like, I feel like I'm just back home and there's an injury or something and I'm just going back. It's just, I've just been so used to that since I was 16 years old that it has not sunk in. I, don't, I think it's going to take a little while for it to actually sink in. Maybe it's after all the training I do with the fire department, then I finally settle in and, okay, this is legit. Um, but for now, no, it just seems like, oh, I'm still talking to the guys. Oh, when's practice next week? When's you know what I mean? Just kind of keeping updated. So, um, that's tough to switch off, right? It's been something that's been a big part of my life for for num numerous yeah, numerous years now, right? So, um, but the good thing is with the the fire department, we uh, there's lots of opportunity for uh, for jobs. I can do side jobs in hockey as well, so I'll definitely want to stay involved, whether it's coaching or uh, doing some other side stuff for hockey. Um, um, so that's always something I want to do, whether it's for little kids or older older athletes as well. So just to kind of shine my experience uh, on some little ones or some people that maybe, maybe kids that are going into the pro or whatever age it is. So it's always going to be a part of me. It's something I want to be a part of as well. No, I think, I mean, I, I think there's a lot 
to be said for you know you you only get to go around once right and if you get to do one career that or spend some time doing a job that you really love then you're you're very lucky and in, yeah. in this case you're going to get that that shot twice uh by the sounds yeah. of having a hockey career and then going to the fire department so honestly um uh although it's really sad from our perspective that, that you won't be coming back to coventry you know really popular i love seeing you on the ice love interacting with you off the ice and and doing things like this um you know, we're, we're, we're really excited that, you know, the next chapter for you looks really bright, mate. So um, we're really glad to hear that. Okay. If, yeah, if you me. had, um, if you had like a little farewell message to, to give to Blaze fans, uh, what, what would that be? Yeah, as kind of mentioned before, as I said, it's you guys have been kind of asking the last few weeks of what's going on. And, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd rather be straightforward right from the start, but I was told by um, the fire chief here to kind of keep everything with social media. Uh, down for now until we start finalizing um, what's actually happening. Uh, but no, as I said, I want to just thank everyone in Coventry. Um, the fans were unbelievable. Um, I'm still going to be watching games, still going to be rooting for the guys for sure. And hopefully there's more games to come with this pandemic. Um, but uh, Stewie brought me along two years ago and he's been an incredible coach, uh, real players coach. And he's been awesome. The management with uh, with Andy and Mike have been great. They treat the guys awesome. And I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to everyone that was involved, to you guys as well. And make that, just make everything in different pieces of the puzzle to make the memory a little bit better. And yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, as I said, to, uh, to not say goodbye in person to a lot of people. But um, this is the card, these are the cards I was dealt with. But I truly want to know, I don't want to, I'm not here to abandon anyone, but I just want everyone to kind of understand how I have to make this transition and how very hard it is to get to this position I'm in. And it's a tricky decision to make. And I just hopefully everyone can support me with the, with this decision. And as I said, I'm going to be rooting on the plays the rest of the season. Absolutely. Stu, have you got anything you wanted to add or, or ask? Yeah, just I, I sort of like a, a passing thought. You you say you you've sort of you know you you're not quite ready to leave hockey yet. You you tell me that you've looked up where your local beer league team is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I so I think well, it's funny because I, I have a couple buddies that are on the fire department and they said, hey, be ready. There's a tournament middle of February, so they're playing other <laughs> fire departments. So I'm like, well, I guess I gotta get my hockey gear shipped back because I left it in England because I didn't know what was gonna happen. <laughs> So that's stuff like that that's going to bring me right back to to my roots and being able to play hockey and, as I said, coach a little bit and then just kind of give back maybe more of the volunteer side of things. Just cause That's just something you just enjoy going on the ice. I think it takes a couple – maybe it's taking me a couple months for everything to sink in that I'm retiring, but then that's something I'm going to want to give back to, whether it's guys my age or younger, and I think that's, that's something I'm always going to want to do. But, yes, I still want to play a little bit of hockey. But I'm not sure what level it is. Not sure how many uh, minutes I'm going to be playing, but I gotta, <laughs> I gotta have some contract negotiations for whatever team I sign up with. It's funny because I watched um, the highlights of the uh, NYPD NYFD game uh, a few yeah. months ago, and it looked kind of intense. I don't know what it's like in the Ontario uh, system, but it looks like it'll yeah. have a lot of fun. I heard the New York Fire Department's actually coming to play in this tournament in February, so oh, wow. it must be it must be a big one. So I think they're trying to stack up their team. As I said, I don't know which line I'm going to be on, so I have to talk to the <laughs> the captain on that one and see uh what, what they're looking to, how they're you looking to use me i guess you could say <laughs> <laughs> that's and i think as well it's it's probably uh fair to uh, ask um obviously tomo's going to be out for a little while it looks like um you, you're moving on a couple of holes in the roster i'm sure you've got a few buddies that might be uh looking for a place to play so uh we're, we're hoping for agent brawl i think a little bit too <laughs> Yeah, I've uh, I've been asked about a few a few guys right now, but I know it's tough. It's tough right now yeah. because there's the whole visa process, and then now with the league not running as many games with the postponement, it's really tough. Probably I would assume the recruit guys right now with the unknown if we're gonna wait a week, two weeks, three weeks till our next game. Um, so I'm sure there's some guys who are happy and unhappy of what's going on in North America, and maybe there's some people that want to come to England. But I think the dust has to settle with the COVID uh, stuff before anyone makes a move. But I'm sure Stewie's been talking to some people, but I think that's probably the big question mark with players that want to come over right now. Yeah, no, for sure. But um, uh, honestly, David, it's, it's great that you've um, you've had the opportunity to do this. We're glad that we could facilitate. Um, we're glad we've had you for a couple of years. It's, it's been a blast, mate. And uh, 
uh, I guess I, I say from everybody at Blaze TV and, and, and the Blaze organization, we wish you well. And, uh, and thank you very much for your service with us, mate. Yeah, thanks, guys. I still got the shirt, man. Don't worry. I'm going to be rocking the Blaze all the time. So I got all the, the gifts at home. So, uh, yeah, I'll be wearing it no problem. I'll be supporting the boys throughout the, the next couple of months on their run here. <laughs> David Paul, thank you very much. And guys watching at home, um, hopefully, I guess we'll just have to keep an eye on the news and, and the, the Elite League website, what's going on with games. Hopefully, we're going to be back at the, uh, the rink soon. Hopefully, we're going to have some Elite League hockey. So. Uh, from Ed Stu, everyone on Blaze TV, and from David Brawl, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you soon. Stay safe. Take care.